All right, so today I'm going to go through my process for painting the skeletons from Cursed City. A bunch of these guys figured into my 24-hour painting of the Cursed City box, but I figured I'd give these guys their own video. And yeah, so we're just going to get started here. Uh, not a ton of colors on this guy. I imagine without drying time, which I'll be skipping in this video, um, I imagine this paint scheme won't take more than 20 minutes. So I'm starting off with Skeleton Horde Contrast Paint. And this is just going on all of the bones that he has. Um, I'm starting with the lightest contrast paints first so that I can do them in order without having to go back and correct. For instance, if I started with the blue, um, I couldn't be as messy. I'd have to be very careful not to get any blue on the bone. But then when I did the bone, I would still have to be careful to not get any on the blue. But because I do the bone first, I can be messy and not worry about it getting any more because the blue will just cover it right up. Um, it's something to think about when you're using contrast paints because some contrast paints will cover others. So, for example, contrast A may cover contrast B, but contrast B over contrast A will still change the color. So, I might be able to put contrast, for instance, the blue, over the skeleton horde, but if I put the skeleton horde over the blue, it would change the properties of the blue to more of a green kind of color. So we just have to think about that as we're going about it here. So yeah, there's all the the bone color done. I'm just going to pause here to make sure it's all good and dry, and then we'll move on to the next color. All right, so now we're back and our bone color's all dry. We're gonna move on to our second color now, Griffhound Orange. This is just gonna be on the shield. And we're using this color um, because it allows us to do basically the cheapest trick in the book of using the contrast color of blue uh, and I do mean in this case uh, as color, contrast color as in on the color wheel they're all contrast colors contrast paint but contrast on the color wheel con uh, blue contrasts with orange and so this will just basically help our miniature look um, aesthetically pleasing without really putting in that much more effort basically just a bonus no more effort required than if we were putting any other color on here, but uh, but it will help it look better. So, that works. Alright, so now we're going to go on to a third color. No reason to pause to let the orange dry, because the blue won't be interacting with it, really. And that's going to be Talisar Blue. It's a very vibrant blue. Um, it's going to get dulled down a little bit by a couple of our final steps, so... That's why we're starting so strong, and we're just putting this all over the robes here. And we don't have to worry too much about uh, getting this on the metallic because we're going to come back and paint the metallic with metallic paint. So being layer paint, not contrast paint, it will cover over this absolutely no problem. We just want to avoid mixing it with the orange here and we don't want to get it on any of the bone that we already painted. So we're just going to go around here um, thankfully, because of some of the final steps we're going to do to make this guy look spooky, um, if we end up missing a couple of the, maybe the backsides of some of these tendrils that are on his cloak, it's not really the end of the world because the whole miniature is going to get covered with another paint. And so, if we have to just cover those with that, it won't be a problem. Um, the shaft of the spear here something else we don't have to worry about we're going to come back and paint that in with a non-contrast paint and it will cover right over it so just making sure to be very careful around the bones here and i also want to be careful around these straps well you could do these in non-contrast paint and if i made a large mistake that's probably what i would do um i hope to do them in snake bite leather one of the best contrast paints there is. And so I'm gonna, just going to be careful. But, going back to what I was saying about the 
the final couple steps, because the entire miniature is going to be covered with another color, we don't have to be super duper careful about covering every single step. Like for instance, I'll show you on the other shoulder in just a second. Normally, with this kind of thing, we'd want to make sure to get right up in all the lines and get right up to that edge and stuff. But we can just leave that if we want. I'm going to cover it because I can. But if it was too hard to reach with the brush or you just weren't feeling it or whatever, you can just leave it because our finishing touches later will fix that right up. So I'm just being quite careful right here. And then we just have to do the backs of these robe bits. Being careful not to get any on the bones. Get it in there. And down onto that. And we're good. So that's all the robes. Oh, there's a little bit of robe right there. And right here. So that's all the robes covered. I'll uh, I'll get that all dry, and we'll come back and do the next color. All right. So we got our blue all dried up, and now we're going to move on to our next color, which is going to be snake bite leather. And we're going to do the straps that he's holding onto on the shield, his back, and on his shin armor. So we're just going to over this make sure to not get too much on the orange it probably won't show too badly but why make a mistake if you don't have to so we're gonna flip him around and get this little strap right here and then these straps on his back and as you see it can see I did make a little bit of a mistake on this strap right here I got some blue on it it's such a small detail though and with all the other colors that are going to be applied on top of it, I'm not worried about it. Um, if you are worried about it, um, and you don't have the primer color, in this case I primed with Wraithbone, um, and so they do sell Wraithbone in a pot, you could just correct it real quick and then reapply your uh, snake bite after that. But if you didn't have that, I have discovered that Pallid Witch Flesh is a very good color to spot correct this primer. I don't happen to have a pot of Wraithbone, so it works out. Alright, so that's all our contrast paint done. We're now going to move on to the metallics and the, I believe, just the one non-contrast paint that is not a metallic. Uh, so we're going to start first with Iron Warriors. That's going to be on all of the metal, basically, that isn't chainmail. Um, so the armor panels... Uh, the tip of his spear and his shield and with this this guy's armor has a lot of pock marks on it and so I don't go over the top making sure that I fill in every single pock mark if it fills in fine but if it doesn't I don't worry about it whereas if you were painting for instance a you know a noble knight or something you'd want to make sure his armor was nice and shiny and fully covered and not have primer showing through but in this case it's not going to matter and you'll see why it won't matter at the end when we do our final step so for instance like here on this side bit there's some pock marks there i'm just going to leave the primer showing and it won't matter i am going to make sure i clear up all the blue off of it though i don't want any blue left over just because that's a little messy there we go Yeah, we can do the same thing on the chest plate. And this, um, aside from being convenient for the paint scheme we're doing, it's also convenient just from a time perspective. You don't have to focus on getting the paint into every single detail because you're going to come back and make it work later. But it's also a personal choice. If you want to completely cover every single surface of the armor, your end paint scheme will not look any worse for it. Alright, there we go. And I realized that I said we're going to use this on the shield. We're actually not. We're going to use our chainmail silver on the shield. So I'm just going to get some paint. 
put it on here, and as you can see, right here, there's primer showing through in some of the holes there and there. Haven't been too concerned with making sure it has perfect coverage. Normally that would be a bad thing. In this case, it's going to work out though. All right, so now we're going to grab our second silver. In this case, it's going to be Grey Knight Steel. Just going to give it a good shake. And then we're going to go in and paint all the chainmail, which is really only this chainmail right here in front. Just like this. And again, perfect coverage not required. Just making sure I got all the blue covered up. Then we're going to do the shield. So I'll start with the rim here. And then do the side. Forgetting the sides of shields is one of my co most constant mistakes that I make. I'll paint the front of the shield, the back of the shield, and then forget to paint the side. So make sure you paint the side. And I'm just going to go and follow my brush along all these little details here. Again, not being super precious about it because we're going to come back and put more colors on top of there. But I would like to at least get the hint of color on each of these details. A straight bristle that's causing trouble. That's okay. And now we'll do this sort of... I don't know, sort of looks like Celtic knot pattern or something. Just covering it up completely. Normally maybe you'd go slower and just paint the lines themselves and not just cover the, the gaps in those knots completely, but in this case we're going for speed, and with the last couple washes on here, it won't make a difference anyway. Alright, so there we go. That's our silver done. Then we've just got one more color to do before I pause again for some drying. So this is Gorthor Brown. It's my personal favorite brown that Games Workshop makes. And we're just going to do the spear shaft in this color. So we just want to be careful not to get it on the blue. And then not to get it on the silver. And cylinders can sometimes be tricky. Um, you'll paint two sides of it and think you've got it, but then you'll notice that Another side won't have paint on it. You just gotta rotate the miniature around until you're sure that you have all the sides covered. A little bit of paint in there. Some paint under there. In there, and we're good. All right, so there he is, basically all finished up. Aside from the last couple steps, which we're gonna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause here, make sure everything is dry, and we'll come back and do the last couple steps. Alright, we've got everything dry now, and now we're going to come in with our first wash, and in this case it's null oil, and we're going to put this over everything that is not blue on this miniature. So we're just going to lay it on in here, and if a little bit gets on the blue it's not a big deal, we're just not purposely aiming for the blue when we apply this. All the metallic, all the bone, the leather here. Get the shaft of the spear. And this helps to obviously shade everything, but also we'll put some definition between lines. So, like, here we'll have some more definition between the spear shaft and the robe itself. 
that's always a good idea to have good demarcated borders between colors. Go. Just got to get the bones under here in this foot. And then we'll do the shield. This will really help the silver on here pop. Put some, again, like the uh, like the spear shaft, we'll put some, some depth in this silver. So then I'm just going to rinse my brush off and make sure it's not pooling too much in any one place. Let's grab a little bit off of there. There. And this is something that you can do while you're drying it. You just want to watch it, and if it starts to pool in places, you just yank it back off with a wet brush. No problem at all. Alright, that looks good. So I'm going to let this dry, and then we'll come back and do the last step before the basing. Alright, so our null oil is all dry now. And now we're moving on to the secret weapon of this paint job, and the final step before we do the basing which is Hexwraith Flame. This is a paint specifically released when the Night Haunt faction was released. Um, we're using a big old brush this time, I should point out. Um, and it's meant to make things look sort of ghostly, so that's what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna slap it on here, putting it across the entire miniature. Um, my philosophy with this is put more than you think is necessary and then you can always take it off after. If it starts to dry though before you've put enough on there you'll get those terrible tide marks and the paint layer will start to tear as you put your brush on it and that just it's almost an unrecoverable thing when you start to get those tide marks on things. So I'll just get it on here and then tap it off. Rinse off the brush so I just have a moist brush and then pull a little bit of it off in a couple places if it's too green. We still want all the original colors showing underneath this, but we want a green tint to it. There we go. Then I'm actually going to dry this um, on camera. I'll mute it though so that we don't have blasting of air on the mic, but it's good to see, I think, to... Uh, to show how this dries. And so right now, in my opinion, it doesn't look as good as it does when it fully dries. So here we go. All right, so as you can see, it's now fully dried. And if we look down in those couple places that I talked about leaving some primer showing, right down here, you can see that we've got some nice green glow there and in here in the pock marks. But also now that it's dried, you can see the green really mellows out. And you really get, at least in my opinion, you get this green glow on the miniature without really being able to see where the green is coming from. You don't see patches of green, really. You see the underlying colors, and you just kind of get this otherworldly sort of greenish glow coming from the miniature, and I think that's what makes it work. Not just shaded with green and you see a bunch of green in him, he's just sort of off a little bit. He's Something is wrong with him, and the thing that's wrong with him is he's a skeleton walking towards you with a giant spear. So... I'm going to get my basing stuff prepared, and we'll come back and do the base. Alright, so here we are back with our basing stuff prepared. And what this is, is basically anytime I use gravel or sand or pigment powder or cork, as you can see, I do it over this box so that all the excess and the chips and bits and stuff collect in this box. So then I have it when I'm going to do a base like this. So I just take my super glue, this army painter in this case, and I'm just going to put it, not necessarily covering the full base, but 
around the base as much as possible. Just like this. There we go. And then I'm just going to take him and just swish the base around in this collection. There we go. And now, once we remove the extra bits, just tap off any extra. Now we have a sort of variable texture. A little bit of dog hair in there, but that's okay. We can remove that. Um, we have a variable texture base, which will take the paint just wonderfully. So now what we need to do is make sure this super glue is 100% dry. So we're going to be applying paint to this, and super glue in a brush bristles will ruin that brush forever. There may be some secret way to get super glue out of brushes. I do not know it. So I'm going to dry this completely, come back, and we'll paint the base. All right, so our super glue is all dry. Now we're going to come in with some Sigor Brown, and we're going to paint the base. And I realized I actually need him off this handle, because when I was doing my 24-hour painting, um, I needed to do the bases quickly to save time. Um, and so I just painted the top of the base and the base rim the same color at the same time. So, because I'm trying to match this second set of skeletons to the first, I'll do the same thing. So, I'm just making sure to get this Sigor Brown down into all the crevices of the base here, as well as on the base ring. And the, uh, the Null Oil and the Hex Ray Flame that we put on it uh, sort of acts like a varnish almost. Um, puts a protective layer over the other paints, and so I don't worry about grabbing the miniature this soon after painting him. Uh, typically, if I didn't have anything on it, I would worry a little. I might still do it, but I would be concerned that I might be rubbing off some paint. But in this case, we have those two layers of washes that will help protect the miniature. So I'm just making sure that it gets down in all these crevices and to make this job simpler if you don't want to spend the time getting this contrast paint down into all the crevices like this is just make yourself a scatter box like I have but without the bigger chunks just use some hobby gravel and some pigment powder or some sand or something um, and then you won't have these larger chunks I think the larger cork chunks help uh, the overall look of the base and make it seem more realistic but there's a there's definitely a line to be drawn somewhere between realism and ease of painting and wherever you decide that line is is uh, perfectly fine so there's the the base all painted so I'm just gonna leave him now here we'll make sure that Sigor Brown is nice and dry and we'll come back and do the last couple steps all right, so here we are back with the Sigor Brown mostly dry. Not completely, but mostly. Um, and now we're going to use two paints, basically at the same time, Death Guard Green and Mournfang Brown. This is just going to be to break up the color of the base a little bit. Um, but also, it's quick, so we can knock the steps out quickly. And like I said, because I was trying to match the 24-hour paint schemes, quick was the name of the game. So I'm using a brush that's kind of destroyed basically but it lets me get these nice random patterns which is what I'm after so I'm just tapping this onto the base this is the death guard green then I'm not even gonna wash my brush and I'm gonna go into the Mornfang brown tapping it in the pot tapping the excess off on the paper towel and then just coming in and doing a little bit of something like this wiping it off if it gets on the base rim and there we go and that's the last of the paint now the last thing i'm gonna do is add some tufts so i'm just gonna close my paint first it's always a good strategy and i'm gonna grab a tuft from over here just put a tiny dab of super glue on the bottom and then i'm gonna find a place and stick it down the, uh, the texture of this basin can sometimes make it hard for tufts to stick down. You just need to find a relatively flat space 
and you'll be good to go. Just gonna grab one more. And stick it right about here. There we go. And then I just push it down. Just kind of sandwich it between the bottom of the base and the tuft there. And we're all set. So there he is. I'm going to gently put him back up here. I don't want to clamp him too tight because it will rub on the base rim. And that's not what I want. But yeah, there he is. So I'm just going to grab now one of the... I can actually grab the exact same pose from the... 24 hours paint so here we go I think we achieved the look which is what we want matching is always a good thing when it comes to armies and yeah I hope this was helpful for you guys uh, I'll show you there'll be a couple pictures of him up on screen now uh, some close-ups rather than just on a video like this but yeah thank you everybody for watching if you liked this sort of a painting tutorial let me know if you think I need to speed things up like with a time-lapse or just cut more let me know that as well thank you everybody for watching and I will see you next time